The main character in this movie is Huo Yuanjia. He grew up and settled in Tianjin City and is the son of a Wushu master named Huo Endi. Unfortunately even though the son of a master, Yuanjia was forbidden to learn any martial arts because his father was worried about the boy's asthma which could recur at any time. So Yuanjia often practiced secretly with the help of his best friend Jinsun and one day after his father lost against another master named Zhao. Because he did not release a punch that could kill his opponent, Yuanjia became the subject of ridicule by several children's spectators, one of whom was Master Zhao's son, the opponent who defeated Yuanjia's father. So Yuanjia finally got angry and challenged these bullets. Although the result was that Yuanjia lost badly, but Yuanji did not give up, he instead went home and continued to steal one of the books of moves owned by his father's martial arts college and told his best friend Jinsen to copy the contents of the book to be used to practice secretly as usual and who would have thought that even though training alone only capitalized on a copy of the book. Yuanji, it turns out to be able to develop rapidly and finally be able to take revenge on Master Zhao's son who made fun of him. As time goes on in the next few years, where Yuanji has grown up and has a daughter from his dead wife, and his father has also passed away so all matters related to the martial arts college are now taken care of by Yuanji, including fighting challengers and other martial arts colleges who want to compete for greatness, and one of the challengers is Master Zhao's son who is a child Yuanji had defeated, but the conditions now are different because they are dueling carrying the name of their respective martial arts college. Like it or not Yuanji must accept the challenge even though the results are predictable. Master Zhao's son wants again must lose badly. With their duel, Yuanjia actually became more famous, and even invited more challengers from other martial arts college, which fortunately all could be defeated easily. There is only one problem here and that is the high cost that must be paid for his fame as the city champion, because he continues to treat everyone who praises him at restaurants every day, and Yuanjia was increasingly blinded by his arrogant ambition to become a true champion. One day Yuanjia was provoked by one of the students of another martial arts college, who was the son of another wishy master named Master Chin, and coincidentally has never fought against Yuanjia. Because of this Yuanji turns arrogant, including to his own students and also Yuanji does not listen to anyone's advice including his best friend, Jinsun. In fact, his father used to always teach a humble attitude regardless of friend or foe. Then one day one of his students came to complain after being beaten by Master Chin. Yuanji without thinking went straight to Jinsun's restaurant, where Master Chin was having a birthday party. Without asking anything, Yuanji immediately challenged Master Chin to a duel. Even though Master Chin tried to explain the reason why he beat up Yuanji's student, then the fight between them ensues. Their fight destroys the entire restaurant and leads to Master Chin's death. This was not good news for everyone, especially for Jinsen who finally broke off his friendship with Yuanji because he couldn't bear to see Yuanji's cruelty and arrogance. This also turned out to be bad for Yuanji himself. Because of his actions, Master Chin's son took revenge by slaughtering Yuanji's family. Yuanji then realized that the one who did this was Master Chin's son so he went to the boy and immediately killed Master Chin's son. Yuanji also almost slashed Master Chin's wife's throat but when Yuanji saw Master Chin's daughter, Yuanji finally contemplated his intentions because he remembered his dead daughter and finally realized that he should be mourning for his mother and daughter instead of getting angry like now. From here, Yuanji's guilt began to emerge especially when he later found out that his student was beaten up because he had made a mistake by making fun of Master Chin's wife. Yuanjia, who after realizing that he had become a murderer and had no one left, immediately fled Tianjin and wandered aimlessly for months. And because of the guilt, Yuanjia started to get depressed until there was nothing left but madness. He wandered aimlessly and even almost drowned in the river and was helped by Grandma Sun and her granddaughter, Moon. It was they who ended up taking care of Yuanjia for months until finally his self-awareness began to recover and could do activities again like most people. So as a way to repay his helper, Yuanji began to help with various matters ranging from planting rice to cooking for them. During her years of living in the village with Grandma Sun and Moon, Yuanji began to feel a change in himself. Yuanji finally learned the lesson of humility that his father had always explained to him. Yuanji finally decided to return to Tianjin to make up for all his past mistakes to the people he had hurt in the past. Unfortunately, once back there it seems that the Tianjin he remembers is completely different because of the arrival of soldiers from various countries who have plans to invade China. Fortunately, when he arrived at his home, his most loyal servant was still there. So he could focus on penetrating all the blame on everyone. And it all started with burning all the victory certificates that used to make him arrogant. Then his next destination was to go to the restaurant owned by his best friend Jinsen. But unfortunately, Jinsen still didn't want to meet Yuanji, so he went straight to Master Chin's house. The one he killed, 
to pay his respects and apologize to his family. Yuanji then gets a story in the newspaper about an American wrestler, Hercules, who mocks the Chinese as a pain in the ass. Yuanji used this moment to make up with Jinsen by borrowing money to join the duel against Hercules. Jinsen initially refused but after hearing Yuanji's goal to unite the Chinese against the invaders, Jinsen finally lent money to Yuanji and then the fight against Hercules ensued. An unbalanced fight because Hercules had a much much bigger weight than Yuanjia but during the fight, Yuanjia was far superior and even saved Hercules who was almost impaled on the ring iron. So Hercules had no choice but to admit his defeat. Because of this match, Yuanjia's fame eventually spread across the country and helped to realize Wushu as a sport. Moreover Jinsen was also ready to help with funding matters, so it didn't take long for the dream to come true, and the Shanghai Athletics Association to finally be established with Yuanji as the head of the association. Unfortunately in the midst of this success, there were people who did not like this and they were members of the trade from several countries, who were worried that Yuanji's victory would trigger anti-foreign sentiment among the Chinese people, so it was a threat to their existence. Thus posing a threat to their existence, so to prevent that, they proposed a match between Yuanji and the four champions from their member countries. The challenge was of course accepted despite knowing that he would have to fight four times in a row without a break. Upon learning of this, one of the opponents named Tanaka suddenly showed up at the association office where Yuanjia was located to make sure that Yuanjia really accepted the challenge because even though it benefits him as one of the fighters, for Tanaka, a fight like this is not fair at all. But according to Yuanjia, this is not just a duel against four people but much bigger. Then the fight began, in the first fight Yuanji managed to defeat a boxer from England, and then Yuanji also managed to win against a spear user from Belgium, and also managed to win against a hanger player, and finally against Tanaka. In the first round they fought using weapons. A fierce battle ensued and Yuanji managed to survive, and go to the second round and also Tanaka became the only participant who was able to fight until the second round against Yuanji. This made the trade members worried, because even if Tanaka could keep up with Yuanji, the other participants had already fallen. So if Tanaka lost too it would be a crushing defeat. And to prevent this, the Japanese members put poison in Yuanji's drink before the second round started. And it made Yuanji have trouble breathing, lose a lot of energy, cough up blood and faint. Because the poison had begun to spread throughout his body. And this led Tanaka and Yuanji to protest. And asked the organizers to postpone the match so that Yuanji could be rushed to the hospital. But with all that support, Yuanji apparently chose to continue because he knew he didn't have much time left. So the second half was forced to continue with a predictable end result. Where Yuanji managed to overwhelm Tanaka and even held his punches so as not to injure Tanaka further just like his father did in the past. Fortunately, Tanaka was different from the others. Instead of taking the opportunity, Tanaka then gave up knowing that Yuanji's punches could injure him more severely if they were carried out. Unfortunately, when Yuanji was announced as the champion, he fell, and this also made Tanaka angry, because he knew that the Japanese had poisoned Yuanji. Then the movie ends with Yuanji's spirit being shown practicing wushu in the village, and witnessed by Moon who can only cry and smile. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe, because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. What movie do you want next? Just comment below. Have a nice day.